China's fourth-generation carrier speed exposes the industrial gap with the U.S. and U.K. Can you believe it? The U.S. spent seven years fixing the electromagnetic catapult system on the Ford-class carrier. Yet China's fourth-generation carrier went from steel-cutting to its public debut in less than five years. What's even more groundbreaking is that China's shipbuilding efficiency is reportedly three times that of America's top shipyards. This absolutely shatters the preconception that Western industry is stronger. So, what's the secret? It's not just working overtime, it's China playing. Aircraft Carrier Lego the Jiangnan shipyard broke the carrier down into hundreds of gigantic modules, building them simultaneously like building blocks at different factories across the nation, and finally hauling them to Shanghai for assembly. It's the same principle as saving time when building a Lego set, except each block weighs tens of tons. Even more impressive is the industrial circle of friends behind it. A network of 5,300 supporting enterprises nationwide is focused on one goal. From a tiny screw to the massive deck steel, everything is made in China. Once, Russia wouldn't even sell us the steel technology. But now we can produce everything ourselves. That is the real source of confidence. Now let's dissect why US shipyards are struggling and why the UK had to rely on a Chinese crane to assemble its carrier. What rules has China's? Divine shipbuilding skill. Actually disrupted? Aye. The U.S. shipyards, slow motion. Only one left standing the U.S. was once dubbed the Aircraft Carrier Factory. Due to its powerful industrial system, which at its peak included multiple carrier construction companies. However, the landscape has drastically shifted, leaving only Newport News shipbuilding to carry the torch for nuclear-powered carrier construction. The embarrassing reality is that this shipyard's supply chain has severely shrunk, with the number of suppliers down by 70% compared to three decades ago, and the production of several critical components even facing the risk of a complete halt. Furthermore, most of the production facilities within the yard are relics from the last century. The old equipment not only hinders efficiency but also increases maintenance costs and safety hazards. The Ford-class carrier, the U.S. Navy's new centerpiece was declared operational in 2017, but its core technology, the electromagnetic catapult system, has been plagued with issues. To resolve the technical faults in the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, MALS, the U.S. poured in significant manpower, material resources, and time, spending a full seven years, from 2017 to 2024, before the system was tentatively deemed usable. In stark contrast, China has achieved leapfrog development in carrier construction. The fourth-generation carrier made a stunning debut after only five years. From the R&D and production of steel to the design and installation of the aircraft launch and recovery systems, China has created its own miracle in carrier construction with its highly efficient speed and outstanding technological innovation, making the efficiency gap between the two countries obvious. More ironically, the U.S. was alarmed by China's highly efficient dual-carrier parallel construction model in 2023 and hastily announced a dual-carrier simultaneous construction plan, attempting to shorten construction time by sharing components. This plan was touted as a revolutionary breakthrough in a Pentagon press conference, yet its implementation immediately exposed the fatal flaw of America's deindustrialization. There are only three companies in the entire U.S. capable of producing the carrier's critical specialty steel, and one was forced to shut down for maintenance due to conflicts with environmental regulations. Meanwhile, the supplier for the supporting electronic systems was hit by a labor dispute and strike, delaying the delivery of command systems worth hundreds of millions of dollars by eight months. China, conversely, relies on three major industrial clusters, the Yangtze River Delta, the Pearl River Delta, and the Bohai Rim, where its 5,300 supporting enterprises have formed a tight supply network. From specialized alloy materials to precision electronic components, the entire process is operating on an hour-level response basis. While U.S. carrier construction sites halt due to component shortages, the Chinese shipyard's intelligent logistics system allocates materials minute by minute, making waiting for parts a thing of the past. 
America's slow pace isn't a lack of technology. It's a shattered industrial system. They once had over 500 supporting enterprises backing carrier construction, but now only a handful are desperately hanging on. Supply chain disruption is more fatal than technical difficulty. This proves that modern industry doesn't compete on the strength of a single factory, but on the national capacity for industrial coordination. China's speed is essentially the result of coalescing fragmented forces into one cohesive unit, a capability the U.S. is sorely missing today. 2. The U.K. carrier's sad history, sections built but couldn't be assembled, requiring a Chinese crane it took the U.K.'s Queen Elizabeth-class carrier a full eight years to enter service, almost twice as long as China's fourth-generation carrier. They also attempted a modularization strategy breaking the carrier into 26 sections for simultaneous construction at six different shipyards. But here was the problem. The standards across the various yards were inconsistent, and the component interfaces didn't align. After the sections were transported to the final assembly site, an extra two years were wasted just trying to piece them together. The bigger slap in the face was that the colossal Goliath gantry crane used for the final assembly was made in China. Manufactured by Shanghai Jenhua Heavy Industries, ZPMC, the Goliath crane was an iron behemoth, straddling the wide waters of the 300-meter dock with its red steel beam standing firm against the Atlantic wind. This 20,000-ton machine, equipped with a world-leading hydraulic synchronous lifting system, could precisely hoist 1,000-ton carrier sections like building blocks, with a single lift error of no more than 3 millimeters. During the carrier's launch ceremony at Portsmouth Naval Base, the Royal Navy intentionally used blue and white tarpaulins to cover the striking, CPMC, logo on the crane, yet it couldn't hide the reality of their technological reliance. In contrast, China's shipbuilding industry established a modular production standard system covering the entire carrier industrial chain as early as 2010. From the power compartments built by Dalian Heavy Industry to the island modules from Guangzhou Shipyard International, all components adhere to uniform tolerance standards and interface specifications. In the final assembly workshop at Jiangnan Shipyard, sections from different manufacturers are automatically calibrated via a digital pre-assembly system, using laser positioning for millimeter-level alignment, fitting together as precisely as the gears of a fine clock. This systemic industrial advantage is the core secret that allows China's carrier program to achieve a dumping dumplings, speed and create a generational gap with the West. Commentary The UK's lesson is starkly real. Modularization isn't simply taking parts apart. It requires nationwide unified standards and coordinated operations. They only copied the superficial method but lacked China's industrial command system which led to sections being built but failing to fit, wasting precious time. This confirms China's true advantage. It not only has the capability to manufacture the modules but also the intelligence to integrate them, and this systemic capability is far harder to replicate than a single technology. 3. China's Code of Counterattack The full industrial chain forged by blockades who would have thought that China once couldn't even produce the steel needed for its own aircraft carriers? Russia adamantly refused to sell the technology, calling it a strategic material, and France also declined to cooperate. Forced into a corner, China resolutely tackled the difficult process, starting from steel smelting. Now, not only is the DEX steel 100% domestically produced, but its performance far exceeds Western standards. Paradoxically, the US and Europe are now beginning to lack materials. U.S. carrier specialty steel relies on a handful of steel mills, and a single production stop means a full halt to construction. The U.K. carrier's gas turbine engines must rely on Rolls-Royce for supply, which can lead to sudden shortages and delays. China, however, has a complete, end-to-end -end industrial chain, from steel and radar to the catapult system and carrier-based aircraft, meaning it has no fear of being choked off. Commentary Looking back to the early days of the People's Republic of China, when the Western Bloc used the Coordinating Committee for Multilateral Export Controls COCOM, to impose a technology blockade encompassing aerospace and shipbuilding, this choking off 
campaign became the catalyst for China's industrial rise. In the field of carrier construction, from repeated trials and special steel smelting to the reverse engineering of marine gas turbines, countless researchers filled technical gaps with tens of thousands of experimental data points while virtually operating in a state of closed-door construction. The decades of accumulation have resulted in the current matrix of 5,300 supporting enterprises, forming a complete industrial chain that connects material R&D, core equipment manufacturing, and intelligent information systems. This full industrial chain advantage was fully showcased in the construction cycles of the Shandong and Fujian carriers. The Fujian went from start of construction to launch in only five years, nearly 40% faster than comparable Western carriers. More strategically significant, China not only achieved breakthroughs in crown jewel, technologies like electromagnetic catapult, MOLs, and integrated electric propulsion, but also pushed its carrier construction technical standards to the global forefront. Today, when the international maritime sector discusses specifications for new vessels, the technical solutions proposed by China have become an unavoidable reference point. This industrial revolution, which was forced by blockades, is now reshaping the discourse of global marine equipment manufacturing. Want to know more, comeback stories, of Chinese industry? Follow me. Next time, I'll take a deep dive into why Chinese cranes monopolize shipyards worldwide. Thanks for reading, and see you next time.